I have been using the 15 Pro Max for over four months now, and I want to tell you everything I've experienced with this device. So I'll talk about my daily experiences with this device, like how it overheats while charging, or how the battery drains while you switch on 5G, and also how this device handles console gaming. So let's get started. Let's start with the display. The screen of the 15 Pro Max is amazing. It's one of the best I have used. You get a Super Retina 6.7 inches OLED screen that peaks at 2000 nits. For the screen, I have no complaint. Media is amazing on this device. Movies, gaming, and pictures look crystal clear. The iPhone 15 Pro Max has titanium sides and glass back. I actually haven't done a drop test on this device out of fear. But the good thing is that this titanium sides on this iPhone resist scratches. Now let's talk about my least favorite part of the iPhone 15 Pro Max, which is the action button. Believe me, I feel it's overhyped. After using this device for a while, I realized it's not so useful. It's placed at the bottom, so it's awkward to use for the camera. And even with the new Translate feature, it's still not great. The best thing I found using it for is the silence button. Now let's talk about the new Type-C charging port. From the keynote, watching the CEO of Apple talking passionately about Type-C, <laughs> it got me feeling like, oh crap, Samsung has had this shit a long time ago. But all that changed when I got my 15 Pro Max. Now it's easier to record with professional mics, no need for a special cable. You can connect hard drives easily. You can use one cable to charge all your device with no hiccup. The list is endless. For someone that's been using the iPhone since iPhone 4S, I have to tell you that Type-C makes the iPhone better, makes everything easy. For the speaker, my experience with the 15 Pro Max has been nothing but amazing. The iPhone speakers are so clear, you can actually compare it to a mini Bluetooth speaker. The combination of two speakers at the front and the bottom creates an immersive audio environment. Now, talking about the camera on this device, the camera is nothing short of perfection. Personally, I think it's one of iPhone's best camera yet, allowing you to shoot 4K at 30 frames or 60 frames on both the front and the back. And believe me, it's very clear. I find myself not even bothering to use my professional camera on the go because my iPhone can handle everything. Just to put it into perspective, I use a Sony A7 IV. When it comes to pictures, the portrait mode and the main camera features is exceptional, producing beautiful shots in various settings. Here are some pictures and videos I captured over time with my 15 Pro Max. The 15 Pro Max has its flaws, especially the zoom camera, specifically the 4x and 5x zoom. They make photos and videos come out blurry, which is a letdown. Strangely, the 5x zoom was supposed to be the big selling point for the 15 Pro Max. It's even one of the reasons personally I didn't get the 15 Pro. The always-on display on the 15 Pro Max is cool. It lets you check notifications without unlocking your phone, which is handy. However, the always-on display on the 15 Pro Max is really bright, and you can customize it like other Android devices. For the chipset, the 15 Pro Max comes with an A14 Pro chip, which is awesome. I've never faced any lagging or any issues, it just runs super smooth. Whether I'm using apps or doing multiple things at once, this chip handles everything without a hitch. Gaming is a blast on this device too. Playing Call of Duty at the highest graphics and frame rates is super easy. And the phone only warms up a little bit. The A14 chip keeps everything running well. I do wish there were other options for console gaming. Right now, I think there's only Resident Evil 4. And I'm not a big fan of mission games. The battery on the 50 Pro Max is nothing but amazing. If you're a heavy or light user, you get at least 12 hours. One thing to note that it tends to heat up while charging. And though Apple fixed this in iOS 17.02, unfortunately, it came back in the next update, which is quite frustrating. Charging on this device is okay. You can charge a device from 0 to 100 in an hour, 35 minutes. The interesting part is that you get that battery tip that you should charge your device to 80%. With the 15 Pro Max, if you charge to 80% or 100%, the phone dies fast. Also, using 5G on this device kills your battery really, really fast. For the updates, 
it's just the same old stuff. Nothing thrilling. I'm not even excited to get an update these days because I'm always afraid of bugs or maybe it will make the device overheat. On the positive side, the operating system is solid and reliable. It might not have the cool tips and tricks iOS 16 had, but it gives you a straightforward experience. It's nothing fancy, as I said earlier, but it gets the job done. So before I do my conclusion, let's do a little pros and cons. Pros, the camera. It's amazing. It's outstanding. It's not as good as a DSLR camera in the sense that you don't get all the details, but it's one of the best I have used. Pro number two, impressive battery. You get 12 hours plus. For a device with 2,000 nits, this is amazing. Clear screen, doesn't affect the battery. You get 12 hours. Kudos. Pro number three, the speaker experience. DTS speaker, very loud. You don't even need to think about a Bluetooth speaker. Enjoy media. Sound is immersive. One of the best I have seen. Now the cons. The cons are actually more than the pros. Con number one, overheating of the battery. I don't know why a phone of this price is overheating. They said it was bugs. They've still not fixed it. iPhone, why? Or is it the titanium? I don't know. Con number two, the 5X zoom. 5X zoom is shit. The S22 of last year has a better zoom than this. I'm not even talking about the distance. I'm just saying, if you put a zoom lens on a phone of this price, at least let's be able to get good pictures and videos. It's bad. Please, do something better. Con number three, the always-on display. The idea of always-on display is for notification, but at the same time, it's supposed to look exciting. It's supposed to look a bit cute. This is too basic. iPhone, add more things. <laughs> Con number three, the software. Now, over time, with my experience with an iPhone, Apple always puts a little tips and tricks out there, and it's always exciting when you find one. As a tech person, it's always exciting to share them. iOS 17 hasn't brought anything useful. It's just bland. iOS 16 was exciting. Every day, there's something new to find. iOS 17, I don't know. I'm not looking forward to the updates. Please, why? For my conclusion, I think the 15 Pro Max is an amazing device. Yes, it's not perfect, but it's one of the best compared to any device on that price point. Now, would I trade my 15 Pro Max for any other device? No, I would not. <laughs> the only device I would actually trade my 15 Pro Max would be maybe the 16 Pro Max. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you like my review. Drop a comment below. Tell me what you think about my review. And I'll see you guys in the next one.